Hi there. Uh, we're here to uh, have a brief overview of the upcoming uh, Tortuga Audio uh, Organic LED Display or OLED Display. Uh, we're going to plug power into our preamp and first thing that's going to happen once it goes through a brief boot up process is you'll see the splash screen. Here we have the Tortuga logo which uh, will display and then fade and at that point uh, the unit will simply remain off until turned on so let's turn the unit back on and uh, now we have the brief splash and we go right to the volume display screen and the volume is, um, uh, is shown both with uh, numbers numerically as well as a uh, volume bar so you, you can uh, have two indications of where you are in the volume spectrum. I'm raising and lowering it now with the, uh, with the remote. Um, I can press the um, uh, mute button and it goes down to uh, zero at which point it simply says it's muted. And um, I can continue to press the mute button several times. You can just see it going back and forth until finally we leave it alone and now it's at volume 66. I can use the right and left button to adjust channel balance and you can see channel balance being plus three steps to the right at this point. I'll bring that back to zero and now we can put, change channel balance to the left. Now we have five points, five steps to the left. Put that back to zero. In the upper left hand corner of the display you can see that we're on input number two which happens to have the label of DAC. Now if I hit the menu button, I jump out into our main menu, uh, which uh, obviously we were at volume, so that's the main menu point we're at. Uh, if we go up one, we're at the off, which is at the top of the menu list, and we go back to volume, and we go down to input, display, cal, impedance, and then some additional settings. The additional settings currently include being able to change the number of inputs, uh, to change the units of display, and to also uh, alter the maximum volume that you can switch to when you're, ch when you're going from one input to the next. Uh, going back up to the menu chain, we're going back up to uh, volume, and here we are. At, at any point, I mean, when you press the menu, you go to the uh, main menu list. If you press the uh, menu button on the remote again, you go back to uh, the volume. So let's go to input. And here we're at, uh, we happen to be on the input number two, which is a DAC. Uh, the numbers in the upper, upper right hand corner are telling us that DAC is currently at 66 uh, volume step. And the maximum that we can uh, uh, switch to on any input is, is 70 initially. We can go above 70, but we, when we're switching inputs, we can only go to as high as 70. Now, if we use the fast switch uh, using the right and left on the on the uh, right and left buttons on the remote, we can go immediately to input number two, which happens to be CD, or uh, input number uh, one, which happens to be phono. Um, and you can see how, as we do this, uh, the numbers in the upper right-hand corner change to show what volume these devices were last set at. Now, when we're changing them using the left and right button, they're changing to those inputs immediately. The other way of changing inputs is the raise and lower button on the remote, where they don't immediately changed, but you, you're changing them uh, by selecting the new input, in this case CD, pressing the center button, and at that point the unit will ramp down, change the input, and ramp back up to the last volume associated with that input device. Going back to input, uh, we happen to have CD here, but we can also change that by, uh, let's say we wanted to make that um, uh, tape. So we can go to um, We'll go to our edit mode. Let's say we wanted to make that into tape. So we're doing going that process here. We add another letter. We go up to the P. Up to the P, and there we go. So now 
uh, input number three is labeled as tape from here on out. And we have display. With display, we can change both the brightness level. So I'm going to raise it up. It goes all the way up to 14. That's maximum brightness and all the way down to 2, which is fairly faint. You can see the difference between uh, the current setting and the setting we just adjusted to because the information on the right is staying constant, whereas the level is going up and down. So you can see the relative changes. I'm going to leave it at 9 and just lock that in. Uh, if you want to have the display timeout, uh, you can also uh, have a timeout after 5 seconds or 6 or 7 or whatever you want to, up to 99 seconds. So let's say we want this timeout at 5 seconds. We lock that in, and after 5 seconds, the display will simply go off. If we hit any button on the remote, it comes back on immediately. So let's go back up to display and just turn that off for right now. Some other um, menu items we can go to is, uh, let's say we go to calibration. Here we have uh, sort of a, a summary status of what's happening, uh, which is nothing because it's, it's calibrations uh, turned off. But if I press the, uh, the right button on the remote three times in a row, it will uh, initiate calibration. Uh, you won't see anything initially, but then you'll see the numbers start to change. Uh, it's telling us that we're um, looking at board one of two, which means there's a second board attached uh, to, this, uh, to this main board, which is probably in a balanced configuration. It's telling us what the status is, what the impedance is currently set at for this calibration, which LDR we're on, what, what calibration step we're on, and the uh, command index associated with that particular step in LDR. Uh, we can also switch to the next board, which you can see board number two of two. Now we're seeing the, the progress of the, uh, the adjacent uh, V25 controller board, uh, which is calibrating separately and independent of the uh, primary board. So let's go back to uh, board number one and uh, we can uh, step out of uh, calibration and uh, go to impedance display and here we're it's showing us that uh, we're currently set at uh, the default impedance setting number one which is set at 20k this can't be changed um, uh, number one is locked at 20k by default it's telling us in the upper right hand corner that uh, we're our calibration is okay, so we're, we're good to use this particular uh, impedance setting. Uh, there are nine other settings we could go to. Uh, they're all turned off currently. If I want to turn this one on, I could uh, adjust it whatever number I happen to um, uh, want to try. Uh, 10K in this case, but it tells us we would need Cal, so we would have to run calibration in order for this to become effective. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that one off again, go back to the uh, uh, setting number one at 20k and escape out of there. Uh, the last uh, items we will go through is settings and um, we can change the number of inputs. We happen to be at three inputs at this point. We can change it to two or if you have four or five inputs on your board, uh, that's how you tell the, um, the controller that you've got additional inputs. Not something you're going to edit very often, if at all, but it's there uh, if you change the configuration of the hardware. We escape out of that. We can go down to units. Uh, we, we've had them at steps. Let's change it to dB. Lock that in. Now we go back to our volume display, and we can see that our volume is now displayed in, in uh, decimal, uh, uh, decimal steps rather than uh, just numerical steps. So this goes all the way down to minus 60. And if we ramped it all the way up to the maximum volume, it would go all the way up to zero. So let's go back down to the settings again. And uh, we'll change units back to steps. And let's go back to that settings one more time. And we'll also, there's their max volume. It's the, it's the maximum volume at input change. So if we're changing from input number one to input number two, and if input two would happen to be set at a very high volume when it was last being used, 
this will limit it to a maximum volume of 70 out of 100 when you make that input change. That's to protect against inadvertently switching to a very, very high prior volume. And um, that's uh, about wraps it up uh, on the new uh, OLED display. This uh, we continue to develop the uh, software around this, and we'll be releasing this very soon. Uh, not least, let's turn the uh, preamp off, and we'll see our Tortuga fade away to black. Thanks for watching.